Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church. We pray that the Word of God will strengthen your faith and that your worship with us will bring joy to your hearts and lives. We are glad to have you join us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve Him as His dear children. But we have disobeyed Him and deserve only His wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to Him and plead for His mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, He has removed your guilt forever. You are His own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to His will. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, the Spirit to think and do what is right, that we who cannot do anything that is good without you may by your help be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our fellowship with God is established by the blood of Christ and by His Word. And the goal of that fellowship is that we should do His will, not our own. We have been saved to hear and to speak and to serve. We've also been saved and joined in fellowship with the Lord who then cares for us and provides for all of our needs. First lesson for the tenth Sunday after Pentecost is recorded in Exodus chapter 24. When Moses went and told the people all the Lord's words and laws, they responded with one voice, Everything the Lord has said we will do. Moses then wrote down everything the Lord had said. He got up early the next morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up twelve stone pillars representing the twelve tribes of Israel. Then he sent young Israelite men and they offered burnt offerings and sacrificed young bulls as fellowship offerings to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in bowls, and the other half he sprinkled on the altar. And then he took the book of the covenant and read it to the people. They responded, We will do everything the Lord has said. We will obey. Moses then took the blood, sprinkled it on the people, and said, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Moses and Aaron Nadab and Abihu and the seventy elders of Israel went up and saw the God of Israel. Under his feet was something like a pavement made of sapphire, clear as the sky itself. But God did not raise his hand against these leaders of the Israelites. They saw God and they ate and drank. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm of the day is Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. O Lord Almighty, blessed are they who trust in you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson is recorded in Ephesians chapter 4. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, 
just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. And then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of men and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into Him who is the head, that is Christ. From Him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia! Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The gospel is recorded in John chapter 6, beginning with verse 1. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the miraculous signs he had performed on the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover feast was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Eight months' wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and the men sat down, about five thousand of them. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the miraculous sign that Jesus did, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. This is the gospel of our Lord. We confess the Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He he descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We're about for meditation. Gospel reading in John chapter 6. Jesus feeds the 5,000. My dear Christian friends, we like to think of ourselves as self-sufficient. We don't like to, to give up our independence. We don't like to have to rely on someone else. And so when problems come, when we're faced with challenges and struggles, what happens? Uh, we worry. We wonder how we'll make it through. We look for answers ourselves. And we often find it hard to trust the Lord and His promises. And we focus on the problems and we fail to remember that he has promised to care for us. We fail to remember His faithfulness in the past and how He has graciously cared for us. Now, how rarely Jesus' solution to one set of problems causes us then to, to trust Him with a, another set that to us I suppose seems unrelated, perhaps even more impossible. Our usual response when problems come to doubt. Uh, we think, well, this time things are different. But consider the little child. Now, he doesn't worry about where his next meal will come from. Mom and dad will provide. And he doesn't worry about whether or not he will have clothes to wear. Mom and dad will see to that. And even when problems come, he probably doesn't lose much sleep because he's confident that mom and dad will take care of things. A little child confidently trusts his parents that they will meet his needs. And we can have that same trust in our Lord. But Jesus says to us, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn. Yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than, the, than birds. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? And while the Lord doesn't want us to be lazy, since, well, after all, he's going to provide, he, he doesn't want us to worry. He wants us to place our complete trust in him to care for us. As God's faithful stewards, we will work and plan so we have those things that we need, things that we need for body and life so that we can provide for our and for our family's needs. But at the same time, we never forget our always total dependence on Him, both in spiritual and in physical matters. Now, without His blessing, we can accomplish nothing. Without Him, uh, we're doomed doomed in this life and certainly eternally. And in a dramatic way through the miraculous feeding of the 5,000, Jesus taught his disciples and he teaches us that lesson. Trust him to provide. You can trust him to provide for your needs. You, he knows what your needs are. He provides for you in your weakness. And in fact, in grace, he provides so very generously. The crowd of people here in our text had a need. They had traveled, some of them, many miles to come and to listen to Jesus teach. Uh, Jesus had traveled out into the deserted countryside for some quiet time with His disciples. These people had, had followed eager to listen to Jesus. They had spent a good part of the day, much of the afternoon anyway, listening to Jesus. And now, oh, it's fast approaching mealtime and they're excitement and haste to see Jesus, to hear Him. They hadn't bothered to, to pack a lunch. Thought probably hadn't crossed their minds. But now the mealtime approached. They had no food. There was no place nearby where they could go and buy any. Now, Jesus certainly could have just dismissed the people, left them to fend for themselves. They might have been quite hungry by the time they got back to town, but I doubt that any of them would have died. But Jesus didn't just dismiss them. He was concerned for them, concerned for their physical needs as well as their spiritual. And so he provides a, a simple meal for them. 
provides for them by means of a miracle. He recognized their need before they did, and he provided. And Jesus also knows what we need, and he provides for our physical needs. We have the food and clothing and shelter that we need. Now, generally, he doesn't provide for us by miracles. He does it through natural means. But it's God, finally, who gives us the ability and the strength so that we can earn a living. And Moses reminded the children of Israel, You may say to yourself, My power and the strength of my hand have, pro have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth, and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your forefathers, as it is today. The Lord who is the one who blesses our efforts so that we prosper and ultimately without God sending the, the necessary rain and the sun, none of us would have any food to eat. And so we can declare with the psalmist, the eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord knows our physical needs. He's concerned about those needs. More importantly, though, He knows our spiritual need. Uh, spiritually, we were in desperate need, dead in sin, unable to provide for ourselves, unable to give God the holiness He requires. Jesus knew that need and provides. In an impossible situation. But Jesus provided for that spiritual need by becoming our substitute, living and dying for us. Before Jesus miraculously fed the crowd, He'd spent the afternoon teaching them, teaching them the way of salvation that was through Him. He had come to be that Savior from sin. Afterward, when they tried to thwart His plan by making Him an earthly king, Jesus withdrew. He's also provided for our spiritual needs. Living that perfect life that God demands. Providing us with the, the faith that trusts Him as our Savior. Giving to us His holiness as our very own. Taking on Himself all our sins and suffering their punishment. He's provided everything that we need spiritually. Accomplishing our salvation. Everything that we need for this life and for eternity, the Lord has given to us. And that in spite of our weakness, in spite of our sinfulness. And oftentimes that sin shows itself in our failure to, to trust Jesus. It shows itself in worry. It shows itself in our misplaced priorities as we chase after those things of the world and fail to put Jesus and His Word number one. And sin shows itself in the, the struggles we face as we wonder how we're going to make it through. But those things are really a, a, a dim indication of how truly sinful we were by nature and how completely helpless we are. And in love, our Savior provides for all of our needs. Now, Jesus presents the problem of feeding this large crowd to His disciples. Yes, Philip where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Well, Philip saw no way to, to provide sufficient for all these people. Eight months' wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite, Philip answered Jesus. Now that amount of money was probably more than the disciples had in their treasury. It was impossible to feed so many. And Philip could have added that even if there was enough money, there was no place to go and buy the food. Philip saw no possibility. Andrew as well tried to find a solution. Apparently, the disciples had gone through the crowd to find out whether anyone had some food, and all they found was a, a boy with five small barley loaves and two fish. But as Andrew said, how far will they go among so many? And it seemed an impossible, it was an impossible situation for the disciples to feed these people. They were unable to provide. They needed to trust Jesus. They needed to look to Jesus to provide. And this is just what Jesus wanted to teach them by the question that he posed to Philip. And we're told Jesus did that to, to test his disciples. Now, was unfortunately here they failed that test. Now, Jesus had provided for them 
a short while earlier when he had sent them out two by two as, as missionaries with only their staffs. They had witnessed his faithfulness in the past. They had seen his miracles. They knew his promises. They, they should have placed the matter in Jesus' hands and trusted him. Instead, they went about looking for a solution to the impossible. Now, it seems that Jesus posed the, the question to them before he spent the day teaching. And so they had opportunity to consider and, and look for solutions beforehand. And as a result, they must have missed out on, a, on much of Jesus' teaching because of that problem they saw arising, a problem which they couldn't figure out any possible solution to. But it's a good reminder for us that when Jesus is speaking, it's, it's a good idea to listen. Now, how hard it can be to listen many times when we're faced with any number of problems, how easy to become focused on those, those problems and distracted by them. But so often if we listen, we may get the answer to the problem or we may find out that really it isn't such a big problem after all. Unfortunately, it seems that much of the crowd too failed to properly listen as, as Jesus taught. After the miracle, all they saw was a, a bread king, someone who could take care of their earthly needs. They, they really missed the point of his teaching and the miracle as well. The miracles weren't why Jesus had come. He had come to reveal the plan of salvation. He had come to go to the cross to, to die to secure our forgiveness. His kingdom, as he told Pilate later, is not of this world. And so those, that miracle should only have backed up Jesus' teaching, which was not in any way pointing them to any sort of earthly kingdom. And yet, so many look to Jesus simply to help them with the problems of this life. And how easy too for us to be focused on the problems and the needs that we have in this life. And we spend a great deal of time consumed with and, and chasing after the things of the world. And certainly those physical things are great blessings from the Lord. And there are those things that we need to sustain this earthly life. But how often don't we have to confess that many times our concern for the physical crosses over that line and becomes a matter of worry or it becomes a matter of misplaced priorities and the physical things top our list of priorities. Jesus is concerned about this life, but even more, even more important are the spiritual and eternal needs which Jesus provides for as well. And we need Jesus to provide for us. Now, at times... We might be like that crowd we fail to properly plan or those plans look to our own strength, our greed and pride and self-reliance causes us problems and yet the Lord in His love continues to call us to repentance, continues to call us to trust Him, continues to provide. And we can be confident of that. He's already provided for our greatest need when He went to the cross to make payment for our sins and Having provided for that need, we can trust that He will provide for all our needs. And He doesn't just provide. He, in love, He provides for us so very richly and generously. Out of the abundance of His grace, He gives us all that we need. Now here when Jesus fed this large crowd of 5,000 men plus however many women and children there would have been, nobody went without there wasn't just enough so that everybody got a, a little taste. But everyone ate just as much as they wanted. Got to satisfy himself and even then there were 12 baskets left over. More than they began with. And how richly the Lord has provided for us. I mean, we have more than the basic necessities of life. We have more than the food and clothing that we need to sustain life. And we look around our homes, we find many luxuries that we enjoy. Many things, in fact, that others in our world do not have. And yet, are we always thankful for what the Lord has provided? Are we tempted to say to ourselves, Oh Lord, look what I've done? Now Jesus here, too, gave thanks for these meager provisions that were there. A few barley loaves and a couple fish. It wasn't much. And yet before he distributed, he gave thanks to God his Father. 
And certainly we do well to thank God for everything that we have. It's the Lord who's provided for them. It's the Lord who gives to us everything. And true, we may not have everything that we want. We may not have all the luxuries that there are. Like the meal that Jesus provided was, was barley bread, the, the most common type of bread in, in Israel. It wasn't a special or luxurious meal. It wasn't a, a four-course dinner. But certainly He provided very richly for them, even as He's provided so richly for us, even though we may not always have the finest. Now in love, He provides everything that we need. He, he's provided for us spiritually and eternally by exchanging our sin for His righteousness. He went to the cross to secure our salvation and He will provide all that we need for this life as well. We can trust in Him. So do not worry. Do not neglect the Lord by chasing after the physical things of, of this life. Now trust the Lord to provide. Place Him number one and keep those priorities in proper order. Now seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. And as He promises, the Lord will provide for all your needs. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, our Maker and Preserver, we praise and thank You for all that You give us day after day. We are not worthy of all the mercies You show us. You have given us Your precious Word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. We thank You for those who teach and preach Your saving truth at this place and everywhere. Grant them a rich measure of patience, wisdom, and love. Heavenly Father, we pray that You shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, terrors of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Heal those who are sick, cheer those who are sad, calm those who are distressed, and comfort all who are old and infirm. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations, that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. Grant your blessing to every nation on earth. Where there are wars, may there be peace. Where there is hatred, let it be healed. Where there is poverty, danger, or disaster, come with your almighty power to help and restore. We bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus our Lord and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. We give ourselves to you that we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Amen. And we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.